All right, so I posted a story today on Instagram asking you guys for feedback on what kind of video you wanted to see me film because I'm filming one tonight and you guys responded. And I'm going to do the topic that was actually asked by more than one person. I had a bunch of people respond, but three people asked the same question, essentially. And that question is, how do I know when I'm ready? Or what are the requisite skills to know that I'm ready? Or how much do I need to learn before I can apply for a job? Now, I've done videos on this subject in the past and touched on it throughout a lot of live streams because it's a really popular question. But I figured I'll film another video today talking about this very subject, and it's a really, really hard subject to cover. And the reason for that is because there is no real answer. There are people that I know who have gotten jobs in as little as a couple of months by doing like one Udemy course and knowing HTML and CSS in like barely any JavaScript and maybe no JavaScript with the title of web developer as their like actual title and that's what they do on a day-to-day -day basis at the job that they got. And then there are people that have spent years learning and haven't been able to find jobs yet. So the range of possible answers here is really big, which makes it so that there's not really one right answer. So what I'm going to do now is give some very loose guidelines depending upon what kind of job you're applying to, what kind of job you want, and all of that good stuff, and then I'm going to give you some advice. So really loose guidelines. If you're applying to a job that's a web developer that's just making websites, right? You're going to be spending most of your day in HTML, CSS, maybe touch on some JavaScript, probably vanilla JavaScript or jQuery. You may be working with a CMS like WordPress or Drupal. Then those sorts of things you can apply to a little earlier than if you're trying to work on like web applications and you need to know the nitty gritty of like React or Angular or Vue. So if it's a website type of job, I would say you should have a firm understanding of HTML and CSS and you should be able to replicate pages that already live on the internet. Maybe not a page that you say, oh wow, I wonder how they put off this sick animation or like big data visualization like websites, but like normal everyday websites that you look at and you say, oh, this looks modern, it works on a cell phone and all of the kind of base level stuff for a website to look like it came out of 2018 and not 2005 or not 1995. To do that, you should have a good understanding of HTML, HTML tags and semantic HTML if you want to go down that route. And you should have a good idea about CSS and probably a CSS preprocessor like SAS or less. It would probably also be a good idea to have some sort of understanding of like Bootstrap or Foundation or one of those CSS frameworks because a lot of big agencies and things like that use some sort of CSS framework at least for a grid system and sometimes for components. And then you should know how to be able to do simple stuff with JavaScript like make click events happen, maybe some JavaScript aided animations, be able to do simple loops and maybe change the CSS on something via JavaScript or jQuery. And if you're wanting to make these websites with a CMS like Craft or Drupal or WordPress, you should probably at least have a basic understanding of PHP, specifically the flavor of PHP as to whatever CMS you choose to use is. So if it's WordPress, then it's like just PHP and HTML having a baby inside of PHP files. And if it's something like Craft, then you would need to learn Twig, which is a PHP templating language. Once again, I don't think that you need to have a really in-depth knowledge of PHP or Twig to apply for jobs, especially for junior jobs when it comes to making websites, but you should at least have a familiarity. And if you have all of those skills, then you could probably build like 85 or 90% of the websites on the internet right now. But you should definitely be able to make something that looks better than Craigslist. Like if you can make a website that looks like Twitter or Reddit, like not necessarily the functionality, but be able to code a website that looks exactly like it and works when it's on a cell phone, be able to make responsive websites that's a good first step in having the skills you need to apply for that job. And then the second part of this question is if you want to be a web application developer working on applications that live on the internet, then you're going to need to deep dive into JavaScript a lot more than somebody who's just programming regular old websites. And with that, you'll probably want to pick up a framework. So you have your HTML and your CSS skills down, you've got JavaScript, you can do loops and variables and all of the crazy things that you can do with vanilla JavaScript. It's time to pick a framework and that's either Angular or React or Vue or one of the other thousand ones out there, but those are the big three. And my suggestion as always for which one you learn is find out what's most popular in your area and pick that up because you need to learn the skills to get you a job if you're looking for a job. That's what this subject is about, right? So React's really popular in my area. If I was learning how to code today, I would pick React. 
if I was learning how to code two years ago, like I was two years ago, I would have picked Angular 1 because that's what was most popular here in the Durham, Raleigh area of North Carolina. And you would probably have enough skill and a framework to be able to apply for jobs once you're able to build some simple apps with that framework, a Twitter clone or an Instagram clone. If you can do that from scratch and not need to have your hand held with a step-by-step -step tutorial, then you're probably well on your way to having the skills you need to get a junior developer job making web applications. Now, that's not to say you can't look stuff up and you have to memorize all of these like life cycle methods if it's React because you totally don't. You can look those up on your own, but following a step-by-step -step tutorial is a little bit different than like building your own app on your own, right? And now we've moved on to the advice part of this video, which is me telling you that you shouldn't stress about this as much as you probably do, especially if you're asking this question. See, I think this question is born out of something other than like needing to know that information because most people kind of already know that, especially if you've been watching this channel for a while because I talk about it often enough. But I think this question is actually born out of a bit of insecurity. Like, I don't think I'll ever be ready or I don't know if I'll ever be ready. And those are normal things to feel. I've talked about it in live streams before. Like I went to a boot camp, so I got a piece of paper that said, hey, it's time for you to go and apply to jobs. And I had to because my student loans had to be paid back in three months. And yeah, I had to find myself a job. And if you go to college, you get a degree, which is just another piece of paper that says, hey, it's time for you to find a job. And if you're self-teaching, then you don't get that paper. Like you can get badges on different code, like learning courses and things like that, but you don't actually get like a certificate that says you're ready. And that can be hard to deal with and that can mess with your mind and that can make you think that you're not good enough or you're never going to be ready. But I think that once you start creeping into the idea of maybe I can do this for a living, it's probably time to start applying to a couple of places. Start testing the waters and feeling out the market that you're in and see if you get calls back. And if you get calls back, see if you get interviews. And if you get interviews, see if you get jobs. And then you take those experiences and you use them to make it better the next time you do it. Everybody worries about the code interview. Well, the code interview doesn't get easier unless you've been on a couple of them. I know more than a handful of people who have gotten jobs in this industry with with less experience than I had when I got into it, with less on their resume, with less under their belt, with less learning than I did when I got into it. So you can be ready. Everybody is a case-by-case -case basis, but based upon your cover letter and your resume and how well you do in a phone screen and how well you can put out there into this world that this is something that you really, really want, that you're passionate about, that you're willing and able to learn, there is the possibility that you can get a job with basically just the very beginning of a skill set in web development. Those people are obviously going to be more the exception to the rule than the actual rule themselves, but you're never going to know what your market needs and what particular jobs in your area need until you go out there and you put yourself out there and you try to land a gig. Another option, if you don't think you're ready to actually apply for jobs yet, is try to get involved in the local developer community, go to meetups, find events that developers are going to be at, and try to network and try to get to know people. and get a feeling out process going to figure out where you kind of line up in the pecking order of the talent pool that's there and what people are looking for. And I get it, I still struggle to this day sometimes thinking about whether or not I am good enough and smart enough to be a developer. It's a hard mindset to get out of. But it's something that you have to push back and push down in your mind and just put yourself out there. That's the biggest step that you have to take to getting a job. You obviously need to learn some things, but the hardest part is actually getting yourself to put yourself out there and applying to that first job and taking that first interview and getting over the absolutely anxiety-inducing fear that is a technical interview and whiteboarding and going and doing it because there's no worse one than your first one because you have no idea what to expect. Anyways, guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope you liked this video. Feel free to hit that like button if you do. If you haven't already, if you're new here, hit the subscribe button to follow along in my journey through this crazy world of web development. If you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, leave them in the comments down below. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you again very soon. Bye.